Hi, welcome to Financial Education for the Nation. My name's Warren Shute. I'm here today to talk to you about benefits in kind. How unkind are they? This episode has been sponsored by Idealo, the price comparison website. Hi, okay, so benefits in kind, what are they, why are they hate? Our tax system is notoriously complex. I think it really comes down to layer after layer, decades after decades of different political parties influencing the uh, taxation system, and over time it's just come unbearably complex. Now, that's not really good news for yourselves, because you want to be able to do things yourself and get things organised, but it does mean that channels like this um, do have a place. Now, benefit, your, your, the tax system basically says that, the uh, generalisation here, please don't shoot me, it, I'm talking to many, many different types of class of individual um, who've got different kinds of income, but as a general rule, first £12,500 of income you receive is tax-free, the next £37,500, so taking up to £50,000, is taxed at 20%, then the next 100, so taking up to 150, is taxed at 40%, and then the excess over that is taxed at 45%. Now, this is earned income or self-employed profits. On top of that, we've also got a layer of the national insurance system, which effectively is a tax in its own right. So, as you can see, it, uh, it can get pretty damn expensive, but you don't just pay income tax on your cash income, your salary, bonus, um, uh, overtime, that kind of thing. You pay it on a thing called benefits in kind as well. So all, almost like cash equivalent payments paid to you by your employer. Now, these payments um, can come in various forms. The most common uh, that we see are um, company cars and medical insurance schemes. Now, if you receive non-cash payments, you should receive a P11D form, or most likely you'll receive a P11D form. And if you receive that, you should have received it by the 6th of the July each year. There's not been any extension this year because of coronavirus. You should have received it by the 6th of July. The P11D form is really important to hold on to. Okay, it's really important you keep this because it helps you work out your tax code when your tax notification comes through, your tax code notification comes through um, early uh, in the calendar year before the start of the financial year, so January, February, March time, normally February, March time. Um, but also it will help you work out any tax you pay if you need a tax refund in any way. Um, if you're going for uh, mortgages, you might need to declare it in the case of a mortgage as well. So, because um, it, it's your whole total income. It's not just the cash salary that you receive. When looking at your benefits in kind, it's important to ask yourself the question, is this good value for money? Because although you're receiving something and effectively it's free, it's not you're earning it, they're just giving you a benefit as opposed to salary, it doesn't necessarily mean it's good value for money. Um, and it's really important to you that you look at your PLMD benefit and then look at the benefit you've received and ask yourself the question, is this good value? So on the P11D form, you'll have, for example, £5,000 or say £500. And that is the equivalent salary that they put on the benefit that you've received. It's not the tax you're paying. It's the equivalent salary that you would have received. So, um, you know, weigh it up, which, you know, which is better for you. Um, are you happy with the benefit you're getting? And are you happy with the premium you're paying for that? Because you then pay income tax at the bands that I said at the beginning of this recording based on the p 11 benefit. What basically happens, you have your salary, the p 11 benefit goes on top. So if you were, for example, earning a total salary package of £50,000 and then you have a p 11 benefit of £5,000 that goes on top, that p 11 d benefit is going to be taxed at 40%, for zero. Okay, plus national insurance. Two of the most common P11D benefits that I see are company cars 
and medical insurance. Now let me just touch on each of those. Now there are dozens of others out there, obviously, but these are the two most common. Company cars um, is a really interesting one because company cars are taxed as a percentage of the car value and the percentage you use is dictated by the CO2 emissions that the car produces. So if you have a very environmentally unfriendly car, which produces lots of CO2 emissions, you're in a higher percentage band and therefore a higher percentage of the car value is allocated to your P11D. Whereas if you are on a, in a very environmentally efficient car with very low CO2 emissions or even an electric car with zero CO2 emissions, you're at a very low rate, even a zero rate um, for P11D. It's not quite zero, it's, um, I think it's 2% or something. So it's very, very low rate. So that could be a conversation where you think, actually, next time up my car comes up for renewal, as opposed to just swapping it in, keeping the same car every year, I might have a look at the cars available, look at the CO2 emissions, and say, well, actually, this one is a lower rate. This is going to save me X hundreds or possibly thousands of pounds of income tax every year. Um, there is an alternative which a lot of uh, employers will offer you, and that's to give you a cash payment as opposed to a car payment, okay, P11D benefit. So they say, okay, well, look, rather than having a car because it's taxed so heavily, we were willing to pay you X amount of money. And in that example, you then got to look and say, well, how much money am I getting? So let's say they're going to give you £500 a month, that's £6,000 a year, that would be your benefit amount, so your P11D amount, what are you getting taxed as a car? Obviously with a car, everything's covered, so if anything goes wrong, it's all looked after. If you receive the cash payment, then you are taking care of the car yourself. And you're obviously not going to receive £500, because we have to deduct tax and national insurance off of that. And again, from the beginning of the recording, depending on where you fall, if you're over £50,000, it could be 40 plus percent being deducted. So it's quite a complex area. And generally speaking, it wouldn't be a bad idea if you wanted to ring HMRC or particularly might even be a better idea, go and pay an accountant and say, hey, look, these are, this is what I've been offered. These are the different factors. Which one, from a financial perspective, more is better off? So the second most popular one that we receive is medical insurance, PMI, private medical insurance. Um, and this is a personal thing for you. If I'm honest, um, this really dictates whether you feel having access to a private consultant, so the speed of potential treatment will be quicker. The quality of treatment is arguably very, very similar to the NHS. You might get a private room or most likely get a private room as opposed to being on a ward, so there might be niceties. But the, the reason we kind of talk slides about it is actually the speed of treatment. Um, you're going to see a consultant can often be an awful lot quicker as opposed to waiting in the NHS waiting lines. However, what does baffle me sometimes is I have a couple come in to see me. Mr. has medical insurance through his employer for him and his wife, and Mrs. has medical insurance through her employer for her and her husband. So they're each covered on each other's scheme, and they're obviously each paying benefit and kind tax on the total premium. You can't be insured twice under these things. You can only claim once. So why would you need to be insured on both? So it's a very good idea to look at the quality of cover from both providers, because not all medical insurance is the same. Not all hospital bans are the same. Not all treatment is the same in respect of um, the amount of treatment you can receive, particularly on outpatient treatment. Um, and the excess, the amount you pay before it pays out, is not the same. And then have a look. Now, in an ideal world, if they were identical, you would then consider using it as the lower tax rate individual. So let's say, for example, the husband earns up to £50,000. His benefit in kind is going to be taxed at 20%, as opposed if Mrs. Um, earns over £50,000. Let's say she earns £100,000. Well, no, let's not say that because there's a complexity there. Let's say she earns £80,000. Um, she will be taxed at 40% of the benefit in kind. So in a like-for-like like world, it might be better off the benefit in kind falling on the husband so that um, they pay, you pay a lower rate of income tax. But that's an advice area, really, because there's differences between the policies that should actually be looked through before dictating the tax situation. Just because you are given something, it doesn't mean it's good value for money. Um, so it's very important that you have a look at this. Um, if you are a member of a small 
um, medical insurance scheme. So let's say, for example, you're not uh, working for a big PLC, you maybe work for a smaller company and the employer is being generous offering this. Um, there's a consideration there that if there's a large claim on the scheme, the scheme looks to reclaim that cost by spreading the cost of that across all the premiums, the remaining members. So you could see yourself having a higher P11D benefit than you could actually buy yourself personally. So if you're in a medical insurance scheme, it's worthwhile looking and say, okay, this is costing me £600 a year to be a member of this scheme or £50 a month. What would it cost me if I arranged this insurance myself? You could find that it, it costs you less than that. It may cost you, say, £40. And therefore, there's a discussion around, actually, is it better for me to get the money myself and pay for it personally, in which case it would be very easy for me to carry that to another employer going somewhere else. When you are a member of a big scheme, so let's say you're a member of a PLC scheme, often those claims are diluted so much across all the members, it's less prevalent. You don't see it. Okay, so that's benefit in kind. Non-cash payments that you can receive from your employer that are tax and national insurable, um, and are declared on the P11D statement, which is issued um, in July each year. I think it's the 6th of July each year. Um, you should have your P11D by now. If you don't, contact your payroll department and just say, hey, where is it? So kind of on the tax scheme, uh, the big save, the five things you need to know. I was gonna cover five things your employer can provide to you without you paying any income tax. So the first one, as a, for virtually all of you, I'm not going to get hooked up on the detail here, is a pension scheme. So your employer can contribute into a pension scheme and you pay no tax or benefit on that, which is a great way of doing it. Now, all employers in the UK should now be offering access to what we call a workplace pension scheme or better. If you're not a member of your employer's scheme, I don't think there is a very good reason for any of you not to be a member of it. There are members who are over the lifetime allowance, so have benefits in excess of, for the sake of this recording, a million pounds. Therefore, there'd be an argument where they don't need to be a member of it. But if you don't have benefits in excess of a million pounds, hey, go and join it. Go and join it. The biggest uh, uh, thing I hear from people is, oh, I'm only going to be there a few months. I don't plan on being there very long. That's fine. Join it. And when you move on, join your new one. And when you move on, join your new one. And then eventually just amalgamate and bring all these things together. Um, I think it's the Department of Work and Pensions are working on a thing called the Pensions Dashboard, which we'll probably cover um, at some point. I'm involved with a, um, a group with that, trying to make it ideal for people. And that will be a way of you recording all your different pension schemes. But please, please, please join your employer's pension scheme and pay in definitely as much as they will pay in to match your contributions, okay? Um, because it's free money. Remember, it's free money on the table. If they'll pay 5%, if you pay 5%, for example, well, you double your money overnight like that. There isn't an investment in this world that is that guaranteed doubling your money. And I can say that to the regulator. is a guaranteed return of 100% of your money overnight. You put £5 in, they're going to match it with £5 straight away. Or you put £100 in, they'll match it £100. It's absolutely fantastic. You really need to be that. Now, not all schemes are that generous, I appreciate, but there's a fair, I can't see a reason why anyone, unless you've got over a million pounds worth of pension benefits, would not be a member of the Workplace Pension Scheme, which is tax-free. The second one on my list is death in service cover. So if you've got a life assurance scheme arranged by your employer, payable on your death, it's tax-free. So the benefits, the premiums they pay are not taxable to you. So you get membership for free. These are things that are not declared on your P11D. Fantastic, it's great. It's a really good way of doing it. And it's a real cheap way of employers providing a good benefit to you. And often it's a multiple of your salary. So it could be one times, two times, maybe four times your salary, something like that. If you're a member of some schemes, it could be even higher. But these are tax-free benefits that you can receive, which are fantastic um, and you really should take advantage of. Now, as a side note, if you have an inheritance tax complication around your estate, um, you, could, you should really go and seek advice about having the death benefit proceeds payable into a trust as opposed to payable to your spouse or your children because that will just compound your inheritance tax problem. But for most of you, anyone who adding everything up, 
including the death in service, everything else, if it's less than a million pounds, for most of you, you're not going to have uh, an inheritance tax issue. Um, but what you really need to do in every circumstances is contact your payroll department or your HR and complete a nomination of beneficiaries form. This tells them where that money should be payable to. So whether it should be payable to your spouse, whether it should be payable some to your spouse and some to your children, or if you have um, written a trust, whether it should be nominated and written into trust. So the death benefits should be paid for the trust so it remains outside of your estate. Um, if you want to know more about that, please message me. But I do appreciate it. It'll probably only apply to a few of you as opposed to most of you. Unfortunately, number three, unfortunately, at the moment, there are lots of redundancies and people being laid off um, because of the economic climate and the way the coronavirus has affected our economy. And what that means is there will be redundancies. Um, redundancy counselling to employees is a tax free benefit. And the ones that I have seen, I've been very, very, very impressed by. So if you have been offered redundancy counselling, um, and next career planning, that kind of thing, um, do take it up, do take it up. Even if you are money savvy, even if you are a money planner and you feel you've got your house in order, we can always learn something from someone. Um, and it's great to keep an open mind, take in the information they're saying, go away and do your own research, watch things like this, message me and ask me, um, and then make an informed decision. But um, I think it's a great way of them um, helping you through a very difficult period. The cycle to work scheme is number four on my list. Now, this was a huge one back when it was released. Employers are able to offer a cycle to work scheme, which basically means there is no benefit in kind tax payable on bicycles that are purchased with the intention of you cycling to work. And it does expand out to cycling equipment and a few other things as well. <clears throat> so, you know, if you work ordinary for a larger employer, this is a great way of you buying a bike so you don't pay income tax on the purchase of it, i.e. you don't buy out after tax money. So uh, definitely get in involved with your HR department or your workplace pension, um, sorry, your payroll department, and say, hey, do you offer a cycle to work scheme? Because I'd like to take advantage of it. And then finally, number five on my list is childcare vouchers. So childcare vouchers are now finished, but if you are a member of childcare vouchers, they are a benefit you can receive, which is tax free and is not declared on your P11D benefit. Um, when I say it's finished, members wanting to um, access childcare now use a thing called tax free childcare, which is run in a slightly different way. But if you are a member of these childcare voucher schemes are still valid and are still running. So, um, yeah, another great tax free benefit. Now, there are other um, tax free benefits that your employer can offer you. And many employers don't offer them because they're not aware of them. So perhaps they should go and speak to their accountants and just ask them. So, for example, there are trivi trivial payments um, that you can supply. And one example of that is a £50 voucher um, to your employer, uh, sorry, to your employees. So, for example, if you're an employer listening to this and your employees have done particularly well, they've worked really hard uh, working from home, etc., etc., you can provide them a £50 voucher each um, to you know, enjoy tax free. And that's not one off, that can be done multiple times throughout the year. Um, it is restricted, there are restrictions to six times a year for a company director. I believe it's 12 times for an employee, but it's only six times for a company director. So as a director, you can also receive these vouchers. Um, and then there are um, other incentive vouchers. So if your employee comes to the table with a, a, a scheme that's going to improve the way that the business is run, there's a bonus uh, tax-free bonus payment they can receive there. Or if they contribute to the tax saving or financial um, profitability, should I say, not tax saving, uh, financial profitability of the company, there is also a bonus scheme there um, that they can do. So if you're an employer and those sort of things tick your mind and think, oh, I didn't know about those, like to know, um, please get in touch, just message me. Very happy to share those with you. I try and keep this as general as possible. So that's benefit and kinds and taxes. That's the top five for this week. In the news this week, in the news, the stamp duty holiday has sparked an interest. It definitely has. The housing market is bubbling. 
I don't see that we're going to have a boom in the housing market, but there is certainly activity going on. And what we see in the lending market is 95% mortgages and some very good 90% mortgages coming out from some of the big lenders to encourage first time buyers onto the market. So remember the stamp duty has been waived up to £500,000 for um, purchases until sometime next year, I think it's March next year. So if you are wanting to get on the housing ladder, um, it's a great opportunity to, to revisit your plans. Now, I'm fine with 95% mortgages and 90% mortgages. Some financial advisors think you should put a lot more in. I don't carry that same belief system myself. One thing that I am quite keen on though is that the payments are very affordable to you. Okay, that's really important. I'll do a whole session on first time buyers, I think. I've done one in the past, but I'll revisit it. It's very important that the payments are affordable to you. And what's even more important is after you have moved in, in a completely separate account, put away as for emergency backup, you have three months of your expenditure, which you are not going to touch in the purchase or in the refit of your house. Once it's all ready for you, you've still got three months of your expenditure at least on deposit. Now, I know that sounds a lot of money. I know that sounds very difficult to achieve, but as I just said, redundancies are rife um, in the UK at the moment. Lots of people are laying lots of people off and heaven forbid you move into your property and that would be one, that would be you. You've got at least three months of your expenditure on deposit that you can draw on. So you're going to have a notice period. You can have at least a month, I would imagine. You might get longer. You might have a redundancy payment, which will help you. And on top of that, you've got three months there. So you're, you're sitting good to get yourself out and working and not falling behind on your mortgage payments on your very first mortgage. So 90%, 95% mortgages I'm okay with. Just make sure the payments are affordable. That's the most important thing. And absolute must make sure you've got some money, at least three months of expenditure on deposit um, to make sure that's all safe in case you get made redundant. Second thing in the news this week, which I gotta say um, did make me chuckle. So part of Rishi Sunak's uh, budget statement a couple of weeks ago now was um, that he's gonna force banks basically to produce more uh, fee-free cash machines. So there's a cash machine within a reasonable distance from every UK household. Now, if you ask me, this is crazy. I don't understand it. His argument is that the elderly don't like using um, technology and, uh, and um, digital pay, electronic payments, and that the vulnerable like to use cash and this side and the other. <sighs> I just think there's a lot better ways that you could be spending the money. And if you're going to force the banks to do anything, maybe force them to put some kind of compensation in if people get defrauded using electronic banks or education. So teach the individuals how to use contactless and how to use their um, cards. Putting cash machines in place, I'm not convinced is the answer, but hey, I'm not the chancellor. I'm sure he's got good reasons for it. But if you haven't got a cash machine which is close to you, you will do soon under Rishi Sunak's plans. So um, each week we have dozens and dozens and dozens of questions from you listeners and readers, and it's fantastic to receive them. I do love reading them, and I read every single one of them, and I do respond to all of them. So please, please, please keep them coming, because it makes me realise that this is being listened to and being read, which is ideal, and that's why I do it. I had two questions that I wanted to raise this week. Uh, the first one, the question comes in, it says, I need to wind up my small limited company because I've been severely affected by the coronavirus pandemic. Can I make myself redundant? So the background behind this is it's a small limited company. He is a um, shareholder director and he's saying, well, other people get made redundant. Can I be made redundant? And the answer is yes, you can. So as an employee of your own company, you can actually be made redundant. And it comes with all the same entitlements of everyone else it gets as an employee. So one of those being up to £30,000 of tax-free redundancy money can be paid to you. So yes is the short answer you can be. Um, the next question, can I say, I wish you all the luck with that as well because I know how difficult it is um, at this time for so many people and um, winding up your own company becoming redundant is a very very difficult decision you don't have people around you helping you so reach out speak to your accountant and reach out for some help to so make sure you do it right uh, second question I had come in was a um, 
a tough one actually if I'm honest. I'm gonna read it because it was um it was it was pulling on my heartstrings. Um we have a 27 year interest, I think it's 27 years remaining, interest only mortgage and over thirty thousands of thirty thousand pounds worth of debts in addition to this. Uh, we're on a payment plan, which basically means they've engaged with a debt support agency and they've agreed terms to make payments to help erode this debt, but we can only make the minimum payments at the moment. I'm due to retire in about eight years. My husband is facing redundancy. There's a theme coming through here, isn't there? Uh, we're likely to inherit some money, which could clear our debts in the future, but I'd like to get us in better position now, which is great news to me. Um, as I feel we're just drifting, what should I do? You know, you're absolutely right to want to act now. 100%. You know, acting now is going to make a massive difference. It really, really is. Because you can incrementally chip away at those debts and make a difference. Uh, one thing people don't really appreciate at the moment is that inheritance, inheritance tax, kicks in generally after a million pounds. If you're a married couple and you have a main home and you leave your estate to your children, obviously there's loads of criteria around it, I'm talking a generalization, but after a million pound then you start paying 40% inheritance tax. And what that simply means is you each get 325,000 um, pounds um, tax-free allowance every um, every individual and then on top of that is a hundred and seventy five thousand pounds um, that is linked just to your main residence that's also each for a husband and wife so add those four things together you get your million pounds care on the other hand isn't so generous so care long-term care can actually kick in from zero and it could have potentially wipe out all the inheritance so when I have clients relying on an inheritance or actually relying on a business sale, we try and part those out of the cash flow. We try and part those out of the cash flow and, and my words to them is basically this. Let's plan that you don't receive it. And if you do, it means you turn left on the plane rather than right. Or it means you cruise four times in the year rather than once in your lifetime. You know, it's one of those things. It's um it's nice to look and think, okay, it's tough now, but I've got an inheritance coming, but that's potential inheritance. Get yourself a plan, get yourself a plan. Um, you're only making minimum payments at the moment, respect that. Go on to a site called Entitled To, entitled2.co.uk. I love the site. You key in your data, you run through the plan, and it will tell you if there are any benefits that you're entitled to, which potentially you're not claiming right now, so that could help out. Um, have a look at your income and expenditure, run through the bank out system, see what you can reduce, eliminate. This won't be necessary forever. Um, I worked out you've got about 96 months, okay? So you can do this if you put a plan together. So have a look at your income, try and maximize it in title two. Look at things you can sell online, Facebook Marketplace, stuff like that. See if you can boost your income in any way and then go through your item, items on your expenditure. Do I need this? Do I want this? Can I get something similar for less? really squeeze down your expenditure. Um, in the ratios I talk about in the bank account system, we have 50% of your money going to household bills, 30% uh, going to WAM and 20% going for debt repayment or investment. You might have to squeeze that um, WAM down a bit. So you squeeze it from uh, 30 down to 20, for example, and shift another 10% over to the debt repayment allocation and tweak those percentages to suit you. But um, it might be you're eating a lot of baked beans on toast or um, something like that for a while. But, you know, how great would it be that you get a chunk of this debt paid off? Not necessarily all of it, but a real big chunk of it. So when you arrive, in, arrive at retirement date, you can live there debt free and uh, do something significant with it. But uh, it might even be worthwhile you reaching out to a financial planner. Um, it's going to cost you, okay? It's going to cost you a fee, um, albeit you could go to Citizens Advice and see if you can access a financial planner via them. Um, there are some of us who do access through uh, Citizens Advice. I myself as one included. <clears throat> so um, that will be free, and then you might be able to get some kind of financial plan as opposed to a payment plan, because really you want to go one and above that. Payment plan, these payment plans are fantastic and are essential. They get you going, but you've got to look big picture. You've got to have a vision of what's going on. Um, remember, continue to send your questions in to me, uh, warren at warrenshoot.com, and um, I will raise them in future episodes. So the smarter spender. The smarter spender basically comes out because I don't think spending money is bad. 
I think spending other people's money is bad. So in other words, if you've got some money allocated to HMRC for your tax, spending that is not your money, it's for HMRC. Putting money on a credit card, it's not your money, it's the credit card company's money, you're borrowing it. Spend your wham, spend your money um, and stay in there. So if you are gonna spend money, it's important that we get the best deal we can. So what's trending this week? I have a tie up with a company called Idealo, whom I love. Idealo is a price comparison website. I myself use it, my wife uses it, and my children use it, and I've advocated it um, to many, 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 many other people to use as well. You basically key in the item that you want to buy, and it goes off on the internet and it searches around. So I've just come back from two days camping in the Forest of Dean, had a fantastic time. Um, Nathan, Claire, Joel and Madeline, who we went with, um, Joel had a great bike. I'm looking at the thing, that's a really nice bike. I think Ollie needs a new bike, that'd be good. So the first thing I did is typed in the bike on Idealo and allowed Idealo to go off into the net and show me, oh, okay, these bikes are trending at this price. This has been the history of the price. And I could show, I said, hey, look guys, did you know this? This is actually coming down in price now. So I am looking at buying it, but I might just hold off for a little bit and see if I can get a little bit cheaper. So Idealo is a great place to tie up with them. And what they can do is they can tell me, hey, what's dipping in price this week? So what's dipping in price this week? Whiskey. I'm actually quite a whiskey um, drinker myself. I enjoy a bit of whiskey. Um, so it's 10% cheaper than previous weeks. Um, what really caught my eye was mountain bikes. Mountain bikes are 25% cheaper than last week. And I could vouch for that because I looked at the price trend of this mountain bike and it was trending down. So uh, it's a great site. Go and use it and check out and see what you think. Um, what is good to, well, sorry, what is good this week to think about buying? How many of you got young kids out there? Lego. July is the cheapest month uh, on their records to buy Lego. And I think Lego is a fantastic thing. I've had many, many, many of our with Ollie and Bella building Lego and, um, and myself as a kid. The only thing about Lego is if you come down in the morning without well, your slippers on, you stand on a piece. That just gets me every single time. But Lego, Lego July is the cheapest month they have to buy Lego. And they've said they can justify it. They say, look, we understand why it's cheap to buy these things because a lot of toy resellers and manufacturers are looking to clear their stock. So they want to clear their stock because the new lines come in in September. So they'll be clearing all their stock out. So they start in July, August, and they're ready for September for their new new items. So if you're looking to buy some, um, some gifts, Christmas, guys, is not that long away. So we're money planners, we think ahead, and we do things gradually and consistently. So start buying a couple of items. I wonder if I bought Ollie and Bella some Lego, they'd still appreciate it. Be interesting to do. Um, a couple of trend UK consumer price trends this week. I share this with you because I find it very interesting myself. Uh, laptop and headphones. Uh, the demand for laptops has increased 43% in the last week alone, um, alongside an 18% spike in headphones. What's that telling you? I guess people are getting more mobile, aren't they? We've come out of lockdown. We're now going about doing things. People are going away. I'm for one, I take my laptop with me on holiday just in case I need to do any work. Um, and headphones, if you're traveling, if you're going back on public transport, you know, it's a bit of entertainment, isn't it? So maybe that's what's going on there. And they've also spotted a 31% increase in interest in Bluetooth speakers. Now, come on, we've got to go out to the park and enjoy ourselves. Nothing wrong with having some summer tunes to keep us happy uh, while we're there. So that's where that's come from. And they've currently got a good deal saving of 17% off the Ultimate Ears Mega Boom 3. Now, come on, I'm 46, I think. I'm 46. I have no idea what that is, but the Ultimate Ears Mega Boom 3 sounds pretty cool to me. So uh, you never know. So, guys, um, this has been Financial Education for the Nation. Okay, my aim is to help you organize and plan your money better. If you're good at it, it's to provide you a couple of insights and tweaks. If you're dire with it, it's to provide you with a structure, a plan that you can implement and follow. I do it because I want to help. I've got a great successful financial planning practice called Lex and Wealth. We have an online investment business called Lexo and warrenshoot.com and the money plan is my education side of it. Please message me, send me your questions. I enjoy reading them. I enjoy helping you out. If you have any, if I can help in any other way, please shout and let me know. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. But for now, this has been Financial Education Foundation. My name's Warren Shute, and until next time, keep safe. <laughs>